since the rotation of Path to the Peak and Shining Arcana Gardevoir, Charizard has been able to establish itself as the number one deck in the game, with Tord Reklev winning the European International Championships and setting a precedent of how Charizard EX decks should be built. After that, Liam Halliburton essentially copied Tord's deck and took down the Orlando Ch Regional Championships and Kaiwen Kababe, with a similar build of Charizard EX, won the Perth Regional Championships this weekend as well, meaning that Charizard EX has gone 3-for-3 three three on major tournaments over the past two weekends. So, in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down my Charizard EX list and talking about what makes this deck so powerful in the current format. Before I get into some of the intricacies of this deck, I just want to take a moment and talk about the fundamental power of Charizard EX. Now, in the Pokemon TCG, the strongest cards usually have a large HP, efficient attacks, big damage, or powerful abilities. And if you look at Charizard EX, it actually has all four of these things with 330 HP, a 2 energy attack that deals up to 330 damage, and an ability that powers up those energies immediately for you, essentially making your attack free as you don't have to draw into any energy cards. As long as you have a rare candy and a Charizard, you're good to go and good to start swinging. Now, putting a 330 HP threat into play on the second turn of the game is incredibly aggressive and hard for decks to deal with, and we are seeing the format revolve around decks having answers to this 330 HP beast. Cards like Champau and Iron Leaves are really the only way your Charizard EX is going to be going down on the second turn of the game, and if your opponent doesn't have those cards in their deck, you don't have to set up another Charizard on the next turn, and you can focus on setting up the rest of your board or capitalizing on your opponent's weaknesses maybe by playing a boss's orders. And since we're already setting up Charizard EX, it makes a lot of sense for Pidgeot to be our natural partner as we're already running four rare candies and an Arvin build in order to search them out. So a Pidgeot is a great addition. Now this card is amazing for several reasons. Of course, we're looking at that quick search ability, being able to get any card once a turn. But the other thing this card does is shield for your Charizard. Now on the second turn of the game, if you rare candy out a Pidgeot and rare candy out a Charizard, you put your opponent in an awkward spot where you have two large threats on your board. If they knock out your Charizard EX, your Pidgeot will likely find another rare candy and another Charizard EX coming in, which will be difficult for your opponent to deal with. And if your opponent decides to knock out your Pidgeot EX, well, they have completely ignored your Charizard and you're free to just promote that again and spend your turn searching for other cards. Uh, again, you can play something like a Boss's Orders, maybe you want to play an Iono to disrupt them, but it means that the focus of your turn is not finding another attacker and is instead focused on knocking out the ideal Pokemon uh, and maybe disrupting your opponent in an ideal way. Now that we understand the synergy between Charizard and Pidgeot, let's take a look at my Charizard EX list. Now I say it's my Charizard EX list, but it's really pretty much just a copy of Tord Reklev's UIC list with two changes. I cut a Team Yelchir for a boss's orders as I found I was just using Yelchir to recover boss and sometimes I had Yelchir in my hand and I just wished it was a boss so that I could Pidgeot for something else. And then the other change I made was I just cut a Jirachi for a second Charmeleon. Now, Charmeleon's an amazing card, obviously, to set up Charizard EX. But the other thing that Charmeleon does is protect you from things like TM Devolution and Eerie discarding your rare candies. And additionally, Charmeleon is an essential card to have at the end of the game. Sometimes at the end of the game, you want to transition from a board with two prize Pokemon on it to a board that only has one prizers. Now, what I mean by this is when your opponent goes down to two prizes, maybe they decide to kill your Pidgeot, and then they decide to kill your Charizard, and they're threatening to win the game on a two prize Pokemon on the next turn. Well, if you just remove all your two prize Pokemon from play, don't have a Charizard EX or a Rotom on your board, you can use like Turo or Collapse to remove them. You can attack with Radiant Charizard, which will still be putting out big damage and block your opponent from winning the game. Now, in a situation like this, it's crucial to have the barrel in play so that you can draw cards and a Charmeleon so that on the next turn you can bring out a Charizard EX easily without using a rare candy. Especially as in a board state like this, your opponent will likely be Ionoing you. You don't want to need to find rare candy Charizard 
and finding just a Charizard is far easier as could just mean one Ultra Ball, one Arvin, or one Charizard EX. This one prizer board state might seem like a bit of an obscure thing, but I promise you this comes up very frequently, and I'm sure it's something Tord had in mind while building this deck and including the 1-1 the barrel line. It really gives you an edge in the Charizard mirror match, otherwise every card in this list serves a purpose. Specifically, some of the one ofs have niche uses, which you might not know about. First off, I'm going to talk about Loss Vacuum. Now, this card is incredible for getting rid of problematic tools. Some big callouts are uh, Heavy Baton in Future Hands. Any deck with a Hero's Cape, usually you want to put that in the Loss Zone. Also, in the Mirror Match, if they're playing Maximum Belt, you need to be putting that in the Loss Zone or just knocking out that Charizard. But you don't want to leave those Ace Spec tool cards in play. Additionally, you can use Lost Vacuum to remove a Collapse Stadium from play, then maybe put down some Pokemon and put your own Collapse Stadium into play, removing liabilities from your board. And you can also use Lost Vacuum to get rid of Forest Seal Stone if your opponent puts it down and decides not to use it. And the other thing I'll say about Lost Vacuum is that it's crucial for your Gardevoir EX matchup. Now, in the old format, Gardevoir was so powerful because you would create a large one prize threat in the active, uh, usually a Shining Arcana Gardevoir with a bunch of energies, and it would essentially shield for your Gardevoir EX, where if you didn't kill the Shining Arcana and you killed the Gardevoir EX instead, they would just not put down a new Gardevoir EX and kill you again with that Arcana. But in this format, what the Lost Vacuum allows you to do is vacuum the tool off of Drifloon, knocking it out, then play a boss's orders, bring in that Gardevoir EX, and knock it out. This removes the attacking threat and the Gardevoir EX at the same time, meaning that on your opponent's next turn, they have to put down a new Gardevoir EX in order to power up a new Drifloon, and you can use another boss on the next turn to take out that Gardevoir EX, allowing you to take a massive amount of prize cards in a short period of time. Now the next card I'm going to talk about is Choice Belt and Defiance Band. These are both crucial tools. Uh, I see a lot of people not playing the Choice Belt, but I think this card is really important against Tina specifically in order to use Radiant Charizard to knock them out. Additionally, sometimes this comes up against Lugia, where your opponent has only taken two prize cards, and you really want to be able to just take their V-Star Pokemon off the board. Um, specifically against Tina, what they like to do is they'll set up only one Giratina V-Star, have no Giratina Vs on the bench, and you'll find yourself in a spot where you just have to awkwardly attack a Giratina V-Star for 240. Uh, and when that happens, a Giratina V-Star will be able to take four prizes as it will V-Star attack one of your Charizards and then loss impact your Pidgeot, which puts you in a really rough spot. So being able to put down that Radiant Charizard, slap a Choice Belt and three energies on it really swings the game into your favor. So I really like the Choice Belt inclusion in this deck. And Defiance Band, just a great card overall. There's so many applications for this. Being able to knock out V and EX Pokemon when your opponent has only taken one prize is huge, as well as being able to knock out opposing Charizard EXs when your opponent has taken four prizes really allows you to come back in the mirror match sometimes. Uh, this card is just an ultimate staple, and I think it's just as good as Max Belt. Uh, I've seen a couple of people saying Max Belt is better in the Charizard Mirror, but I actually disagree and don't think it's particularly relevant. Uh, if you use Max Belt to knock out Pidgeot EX on four prizes, that's one of the biggest applications I've seen. But I really don't mind having my Pidgeot EX knocked out in Mirror. Uh, as long as you have that barrel in play, you're st still able to draw cards and you won't have a two prize liability on your board at the end of the game. And you can transition into a board like Charmeleon, Barrel, Radiant Charizard, uh, Cleffa without using a Turo. And of course, Prime Catcher and Counter Catcher are great ways to gust. Uh, like I said earlier in the video, when your opponent doesn't knock out your Charizard EX, you get a turn to do whatever you want. Uh, sometimes this means just playing Gus and knocking out optimal Pokemon or disrupting, while Counter Catcher and Prime Catcher let you do both in the same turn. Instead of spending your supporter to play Boss's Orders, you can play one of these Catchers and an Iono or a Roxanne, and this puts a lot of pressure on your opponent at all times, because at any time you could, say, bring up their Pidgeot, knock it out, and Roxanne them to two cards, and put them in a really uncertain situation. 
Now, a couple other crucial cards, Turo and Roxanne. Roxanne is amazing because it allows you to disrupt your opponent while also giving yourself six cards. Now, this is really relevant as a lot of times when you're disrupting, you need to have follow-up on the next turn, and especially if your Pidgeot EX has been knocked out. Having six cards is really important, usually looking for a boss's orders or a Charizard EX on that follow-up turn. And Professor Turo scenario, amazing card, uh, of course amazing for control, but even if control didn't exist, I would still play two Turos in this deck as picking up your Luminion and your Rotom can be very crucial, as well as picking up damaged Charizards, especially against decks like Ancient Box, which struggle to one-shot your Charizard. Um, and in the mirror as well, Turoing up some Charizards can be very relevant, and even Turoing your Pidgeot off the board, although it seems pretty uh dire is sometimes the correct play as you need to get into a all one prize board or else your opponent will just win the game on the next turn so i really like having two professor turos in this deck now before wrapping up the video i'm going to take a moment to talk through a couple key points for charizard dx's matchups now if we go over to the orlando regionals meta you can see charizard is the number one deck so in charizard mirror my biggest tip is to look to convert to a one prize or board state at the end of the game if you are losing now something i see come up in my games a lot is your opponent will go down to two prizes while you are on four and what you're going to want to look to do in a position like this is use Radiant Charizard and Defiance Ban to knock out your opponent's Pidgeot and go down to two prizes while not having any two prize Pokemon in play. The best thing about this is you will leave your opponent's Charizard EX in play, which can be knocked out for the win. So if your opponent does something like just attacks you back with Radiant Charizard, well, you can win with Charizard EX and a boss's orders on their Charizard. So a lot of times you will get into an awkward stalemate at those two to two ties, which I could probably make an entire video on, but I will save that for another video. So look to create those one prize board states and know what a spec your opponent is playing if they're playing a maximum belt it's really important to know that as your opponent can knock out a charizard ex while you are both on two prize cards but if your opponent is playing prime catcher which i believe to be the best and most popular a spec currently um, you do not need to worry about your Charizard EX being knocked out when you're both on two prizes, so it is safe to have that Charizard EX in play. You can soak a hit and then throw it off the board on the next turn. Moving forward, we got Champau Backscalibur at the number two meta percentage. Uh, in this matchup, you're really going to want to think about the two prize prize trade. Both of you are going to be looking to take three knockouts to win the game. Uh, in order to prevent this, we have Radiant Charizard, which is pretty awkward for Champau as they cannot take two prizes on it. However, at the end of the game, if you do go in with that Radiant Charizard looking to buy a turn in the prize trade, they can use Iron Bundle to force out a different Pokemon, and every other Pokemon in your deck can be taken for two prizes with either a Champau attack or a Ampu very much. So what you're going to want to look to do in this matchup is go ahead two prizes at the start of the game. It's often very difficult to do this, but there are a few ways uh, for you to do that. The first way is to just knock out two one prize Pokemon. This is really nice as it also cripples their draw power. Something like a turn two knockout on a Bidoof or a Frigibax uh, or maybe even a Barrel, depending on who's gone first, can be really valuable. Additionally, if you went second and your opponent decided to just knock out a one prizer with Cham Pao, you can use Defiance Band on Charizard EX to take that first two prize KO, putting you in the lead when it comes to these two prize knockouts. Now, this is what I would consider to be uh, Charizard EX's worst matchup, so keep that in mind. Number three, we've got Future Hands. This matchup is really easy, and all I would recommend doing is not getting too greedy with your setup. Uh, for example, you don't actually need to turn to Rare Candy into Charizard and boss in an Iron Crown and knock it out. You can tank even up to like three prize cards, then just come in with a Charizard EX, vacuum that heavy baton off that Iron Hands, maybe play something like an Iono or a Roxanne, and you will see your opponent's deck begin to crumble as they cannot knock out your Charizard EX. So as long as you set up a single Charizard EX, you should be good in this matchup. 
Number four, we got Garatina. A great inclusion for this matchup is Jirachi. Of course, I didn't play this card, and Liam Halliburton didn't either. Uh, he was lucky enough to dodge these Lost Zone decks. I was not. I lost to two of them. So if you want to beat this matchup, my advice is play Jirachi number one. And like I mentioned earlier, look for that Radiant Charizard KO on that Tina B start in the middle of the game. Up next, we got Arceus. Now, this deck's still taking up 10% of our meta share. Um, my biggest piece of advice for this matchup is to look for that one prize board state at the end of the game. Now, this might involve turrowing up your Pidgeot EX if your opponent hasn't decided to kill it, but you can use Radiant Charizard with Choice Belt or Defiance Band to knock out an Arceus uh, and go down to two prizes at the end of the game. Now, one thing to be careful about is Armor Rouge EX, as if you're not playing Maximum Belt, you actually cannot one-shot this Pokemon, so it can be difficult, uh, assuming your opponent is playing Charcius, which I believe to be the best Charizard variant. Just keep that in mind that it could be a large issue. Up next, we got Lugia. Now, this matchup is pretty straightforward. Really, the only thing you're going to be looking to do is knock out your opponent's Archeops or their Chinchinos. Now, if your opponent puts down Chops and doesn't properly attach energies to their Cincino, or even if they do, I recommend boss killing at Chops. This puts your opponent in a spot where they likely will only be able to use one Cincino in the whole game. And from there, you can usually find a way to win the game and win the prize trade as they can only trade two for one one time and you can usually make that turn back at the end of the game with Radiant Charizard. Uh, last box, pretty similar to Tina, you gotta play Jirachi for this one. I actually think this matchup is maybe even bad with Jirachi as they just have so many ways to apply pressure and knock out your Pokemon. Uh, look to use Ionos and Roxanne to disrupt them, and look to set up a Bibarel as your Pidgeot will likely die at some point to a Raikou. Up next, we got Roaring Moon and Ancient Box. Now, these decks play fairly similarly and are both relatively good matchups. Look to use Turo in the early game to deny your opponent prize cards, and look to convert to that one prize board state at the end of the game if necessary. These ancient decks don't play any hand disruption, so usually at the end of the game, uh, turrowing your Pidgeot off the board is okay. Say your opponent has two prizes, and so do you. Just remove all your two prize Pokemon from play and go in with that Radiant Charizard, and this should set up essentially a checkmate against this deck. Up next, we've got Gardevoir. Now, like I mentioned earlier, you're really going to be looking to vacuum that tool off the Drifloon and boss KO that Gardevoir EX in the same turn force them to put down another Gardevoir EX, and you should be able to win the prize trade from there. One other thing to look out for is Mimikyu, as this Pokemon can be annoying to deal with as you run out of boss's orders, but if you play the Charmeleon that does 70 damage for two energies, you are able to knock out that Mimikyu, and this is actually the main reason I play that Charmeleon, is in order to knock out Mimikyu specifically in Gardevoir EX decks. It is also nice against our next deck, Snorlax Doll, to be able to knock out their Mimikyus, uh, but it is a little less relevant in this matchup as you're rarely using your vacuum to pop off Mimikyu's tool. However, it is still very relevant. Uh, against this deck, I'm not playing Team Yell's Cheer. I don't think it's really necessary. Just look to not bench liabilities and use boss's orders to take out Rotom. Or if your opponent is playing the Pidgeot build, use to look, look to use boss's orders to rip their Pidgeot off the board and then play an Iono and their deck will usually fumble at the end of the game. Uh, one more deck I will talk about is Aspothra. I played against this deck in Orlando and I actually think it's a good matchup for Charizard. Um, all you got to do in this matchup is take two early KOs with Charmander. Yes, use Heat Tackle Charmander. You can kill Flittles or Cleffa. And if you're able to take two prizes with Charmander, you can follow up with a Radzard with three energies or sometimes four, depending on what prize count your opponent's at. Use Radiant Charizard, knock out that mid-game Spathra, which is otherwise really awkward to KO with Charizard EX. And then use one Charizard EX at the end of the game to take out another Spathra for your six prizes. Other than that, the rest of the decks I don't consider to be particularly relevant, so you should be set for all your matchups. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and if you learned something, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe, and leave a comment. Let me know you enjoyed the video. Uh, additionally, if you have any questions about matchups or the deck list, leave them in the comment section down below, and I will do my best to respond to you guys.
Additionally, if you're looking to learn this deck on a more in-depth level, I do offer coaching sessions on metafy.gg. So if you're interested in that, the link is in the description down below.